My mom was a nurse, my dad was a physician, but my dad was an epidemiologist and did more research. My mom was a specialist in uh, cardiology and she was really the one I took after. Uh, I used to tag around with her in the hospital when I was a little bit younger and I just really enjoyed the, the medical aspects of, of things, uh, procedures, uh, management of patients. Um, we used to joke that uh, when I was young, my dad, who would diagnose our own colds and you know various broken bones and stuff, always misdiagnosed all of my broken bones. So fortunately, I took after my mom and her clinical skills. Having said that, I've misdiagnosed all of the broken bones that my own two daughters have had. So there, there are certain genetic factors that, that clearly come into play. I was a third year medical student and really had no interest, no background in ophthalmology at all. And I did a one week rotation, one of our mandatory rotations. Uh, unfortunately now most medical schools don't have required rotations, but we did. And it was the middle of the winter, it was cold, it was dark. Uh, my girlfriend had just broken up with me. Uh, I, was, I was not in a good place. Uh, and I did this week of ophthalmology and I just loved it. I loved the pictures of the eye that I saw. I loved how you could look inside the eye and, and see all sorts of cool things. Uh, so without any prior experience in the field, I just really enjoyed it. And then I did a month of ophthalmology as an elective in my fourth year of medical school at NYU, which is where I ended up doing residency, and loved it. Uh, I had some senior residents. It really took time to show me stuff, got me really interested, uh, and never looked back. My evolution to uveitis was unexpected. Uh, out of residency, I was very interested in corneal surgery, and I did a cornea fellowship at the Jules Stein Eye Institute at UCLA, which I loved. Had a great year, wonderful academic department, great mentors, and I knew that I always wanted to be in academic medicine. I liked the academic environment, I liked the give and take, I liked the publications, uh, I liked the collaborative research. So I was looking for a second fellowship to do to sort of solidify my position, and uh, was all set to take a, a two-year cornea fellowship, a year of clinical work and a year of research at Washington University. And that weekend that I was away, my wife got a call at home in Los Angeles from the Proctor Foundation at University of California at San Francisco, which had a combined uveitis cornea fellowship. And without asking me, they had happened to call down, they were looking, this position had opened up sort of unexpectedly, fairly late in the year. And they had called around to see if some people might be interested. Uh, I was not there, of course, I was in St. Louis. My wife answered the phone, talked to them for about 30 seconds and said, he'll take it. So I came back from St. Louis and my wife said, we're moving to San Francisco. So I ended up in, in San Francisco and while I was at the Proctor Foundation, got exposed to the uveitis, which I really didn't have a lot of background in. Most residencies don't have a lot of uveitis experience, particularly in those days, this was in the 1980s. And uh, I got some exposure to that at UCLA. Again, I had some great mentors that did some uveitis with cornea. Uh, and then went and did two years at the Proctor Foundation, got more and more interested in the uveitis aspect of it. And then I had this sort of strange background. I had a, an anterior segment background in, in cataract surgery and corneal surgery, the uveitis background. And I'd already, always been interested in HIV related diseases, AIDS, came about when I was in medical school in Newark, New Jersey in the early 1980s. Uh, when I was a resident at, at uh, NYU, CMV retinitis, the most common ocular opportunistic infection in patients with AIDS, was becoming more and more prevalent. There was no treatment at that time. And I'd always had an interest in infectious disease. Well, while I was in San Francisco, I started writing some papers with uh, one of my former mentors at UCLA on HIV-related eye diseases. And as it turned out, there was a position that opened up at the Wilmer Eye Institute at Johns Hopkins, where the director there uh, had just become the uh, head of a multi-center trial called the Studies of Ocular Complications of AIDS, or SOCA. And he was looking for someone who had this sort of strange skill set of, obviously, uveitis background, because he ran the uveitis division, of experience with HIV-related eye diseases and then experience in cataract surgery, because he didn't do a whole lot of cataract surgery, and cataract surgery is pretty common in patients with uveitis. So I had this odd skill set that just sort of fit, and what he was looking for, we met at the American Academy of Ophthalmology meeting in 
1989, I guess it was, and just hit it off really well. Uh, and I ended up working with him for the next 20 years. Um, we had a great experience. Uh, uh, he really built up a wonderful uveitis division at, at Wilmer. And I was there for almost 25 years before I came to Wills in 2014. So the thing I really like about uveitis is uh, the fact that it's the field of medicine that perhaps most overlaps with internal medicine. There's a lot of uveitis that's uh, concurrent with underlying systemic diseases, things like sarcoidosis or a variety of rheumatologic diseases, a number of infectious diseases can cause uveitis. And I've always been attracted to that part of medicine. Uh, uveitis is a, is a puzzle that you have to solve. Uh, and to be able to identify an ocular disease that's part of some underlying systemic disease that may not have been previously identified is really gratifying. Plus, uveitis has some fascinating surgery Cataract surgery in patients with uveitis is different from garden variety. Cataract surgery is very challenging, uh, and I enjoy that microsurgical aspect of it. Uh, and I enjoy just working with patients long term. And if you have uveitis, you tend to spend a lot of time with your ophthalmologist. I was very happy uh, when I was at the Woman Eye Institute uh, for, as I said, almost 25 years. Um, but a position to open up here, it was sort of odd that in all of Philadelphia, for all that Philadelphia has to offer medically and ophthalmologically, there was not a lot of, uh, there, there were not a lot of people doing uveitis here in the entire Philadelphia area. Uh, my wife works in Baltimore and often has to commute down to DC, so there wasn't some position that I could take well outside the area. But I came up, met the people here at Wills, really enjoyed them. Uh, the, uh, opportunity to develop a uveitis clinic uh, by myself was one that was very appealing to me. There was a need for that sort of uveitis experience uh, in the area. Wills didn't have someone who just did uveitis. Came up here in 2014 and still commute from Baltimore. Eventually we'll move to Philadelphia, but for right now I commute every day from Baltimore. Uh, and uh, I've been very happy here. A big baseball fan. It was written into my contract that when I made the move, I did not have to adopt any of the Philadelphia teams as my own. So I still support, sadly, the Orioles, who are struggling, uh, the Ravens. So I'm a big Baltimore sports fan. I haven't, haven't quite yet adopted the, uh, the Philadelphia teams.